Hey everybody, The Cauldron Witch here, and I uh, just wanted to do a basic video just on simple advice for new witches. Now, if you look, there's a million videos out there. My key, I mean, my video is obviously not the only one. I'm sure you've seen many more before you came across this one. Uh, but I do have a few things that I just haven't heard so far. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I haven't, so I might as well just pitch in what I what I got, right? So, I'm reading from my list, so every time I look down, just so you know. But again, this is advice for any new witches that's coming into the craft, coming into paganism, or really anything new. Um, obviously, more solely based on witchcraft, but you get the idea. Alright, well, for the first one, first advice I'd give is patience is key. You're not going to learn everything in a night or in a week or in a month or in a year um, or even 10 years at that. You're going to always be learning new things. So you got to know to take one step at a time. When you do that and go slow and just live day by day, picking up on it and building a skill, you're practicing that craft. You're developing that new skill in order to form yourself as a witch. And that takes time. And that's with, and again, that's with everything. So you're always going to be learning witchcraft is a long life practice you're never going to know it all so when you come across something new that you want to learn about or develop a new skill take your time with it and progress and grow that skill become that which you want to be and achieve that goal from there you come across a new one and you'll feel glad by the time you're done waiting that long because of how strong or potent that is for you. The second one is being open-minded. If you are a closed-minded person, odds are you're not gonna make it out. You're not gonna make the cut of being any form of pagan or witch or anything like that. Being closed-minded just is cutting all beliefs off and all thought pro uh, being closed minded is, clo is basically closing those doors you're not going to let anything in how is the divine going to get inside if you won't let it in being open minded is meaning seeing more than what meets the eye everything is magic and in order to see that you've got to be open minded you've got to know that coincidences, coincidences most likely don't exist Maybe the smallest, tiniest possibility, if that. Magic is everywhere. And in order to see it, you have to be open-minded. You gotta think about it. You gotta feel it. Um, dedicating yourself to do your research about the history, about the lures, about things we use, and how we manipulate the energy around us, and how we actually perform magic dedicating your time to that and researching that in any way you can the internet books um talking to people about it talking to your family maybe you have some witches in your family you don't even know about and just maybe going into a group coven look online see if there's any botanicas or occult shops and go speak to people and learn about it the more you learn the more you will be knowing what you're doing never step into witchcraft and automatically think you're a witch and start doing things because you really are doing things but you don't know what you're doing and with that you could be doing something you don't want to be doing so the more you know the better um understanding that everybody's craft is different Everybody's craft is different. You're rarely going to find somebody that has the same beliefs as you. You're never going to find somebody that has the exact same beliefs as you and that practices the exact same way. Even covens have the slightest difference to them all. Witches are different in their own way. And you got to understand what one, what something works for one might not work for you. And what works for you might not work for someone else. And you have to understand that and be okay with that. You you might come across a witch that honors a unicorn as a deity, and guess what? Their magic might really work, and 
That might sound a little bizarre, how are they performing magic when they honor a unicorn, but guess what, motherfucker, it kinda exists in a spiritual form, and that ties into being open-minded. Everything exists out there, as long as you have, as long as you feel the energy to it, it's there. Like my spirit guide, for example, is a phoenix. Phoenixes aren't on this plane, but their spiritual energy is, and that's what I go to, that's who I resonate with. That's who helps me out. Um, and with that being said, don't worry about how bizarre your magic is. Even if it is to that extent. Or even beyond magical. More magical. More mystical. Um, because if as long as you feel the energy and it works for you. I'll, many witches will tell you it might. Well, hopefully they don't but might tell you that it doesn't work and it's not gonna work and again as long as you can feel it that's what matters don't discard yourself from that with that spark you feel lights the flame and the lights the boost star of your manipula your manipulation process in magic um okay so real quick tools are tools uh yeah, okay, so tools are just tools. They're not needed. None of this right here is needed in magic. Absolutely none of it. And there's a shit ton more everywhere else. But it's not needed. And as long as you can step outside and find sticks, dirt, leaves, a tree, anything that is part of the earth, even if you live in the city, you can find something you can make magic. And if you really, really, really can't, you have you, yourself, and, and you. Uh, you have the sun, you have the moon, you have the universe, you're never without anything. You can make magic happen with absolutely nothing but your mind. That's what witchcraft is. Yeah. Okay. Meditation is very important. Why is meditation very important? Because meditation aligns your energy. And it aligns your chakras to make everything function right it allows your energy to be at peace and be calm and vibrant and with that that's what you make magic with that kind of energy the magic you conjure is you so if your energy is crazy and If your energy is crazy and wacky and uncontrollable, your magic will be as well. If you're calm and aligned, your magic will work in exactly how you visualized it to. Um, meditation helps with even casting spells. Meditation, you gotta kinda, in a way, when you cast spells or when you put your energy into something, you slow yourself into a deep meditation. And visualize things meditation is very important the more you do so the better you get at it the better you are and all of this doesn't and I will keep saying spells and spells and witchcraft isn't just about spells but putting your intention into something or just stepping outside and like breathing the air you just when you breathe in the air and let it all out put yourself in a meditative trance breathe like you're meditating it's not, you know, I'm just letting you guys know. It's not all just about spells. Look more into it. I say that when I got two spells going on, though. <laughs> Alright. Only use if it feels... Okay, so yeah, so again, when I say certain things might not feel right to you. For example, in the book Scott Cunningham, Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs, he has listed lavender as a protective agent. And I don't really vibe with that i do but i don't i feel like there's two different well there's many different types of protection but two main important types physical and spiritual i feel like cinnamon which I, I believe is listed would be a great use for physical protection lavender not at all Lavender, I feel like, would definitely be used for a spiritual protection. Cinnamon, maybe not so much, but you get the picture. So, others might argue on that. Others might view that completely opposite. 
but as long as that's how you view it, that's how it works for you, have fun. All right. Uh, try new things and see what your energy can do. Look into different types of magic, different types of meditation. Uh, put yourself out there. See if there's any volunteer work or anything you can do to help with the planet. And see what you're good at and see what you can do to make a difference in the world. Again, always watch your spending when it comes to magic. Nothing is, like, like just that just falls under the category of you don't need anything as a lot of tools. Okay, bye. But, yeah. Uh, so I already went into, I didn't know I had it listed, that witchcraft is more than just spell work. Uh, when there is a problem, please, oh god, okay, I can't stress this enough. I've always, I've seen videos on here of witches asking witches why they don't turn to their magic when something's wrong. And honestly, like, to anybody, magic is where you should always turn to when you're in the dust. When there is an issue and you're left in the dark, what do you do? You go to your magic. When there is an issue you can't resolve, what do you do? Go to your magic. When you're lacking something, what do you do? Go to your magic. When magic is there for you to make your life easier, it's for your benefit. It's for the universal balance in which you have control over as long as you follow certain rules to the universe, which for me is harm none unless you've been harmed first and be graceful and don't be greedy or glut don't have gluttony in it and other than that you're pretty much good um yeah definitely be graceful um but that's what it's here for. So when there is a problem, turn to your magic. Your magic will help you get out of the dark. Okay. I'm just reading this in my head real quick. Okay. When you doubt your... Oh, what the hell did I write? I'm sorry. Okay. Got it. For those who feel like they have to be proved, there's no such thing as proving witchcraft exists other than by you doing it yourself. And even at that, if you're closed-minded or a skeptic, you might, if you're closed-minded, you're gonna have an issue seeing it. But the best way I can put it out for you is you do a spell. You sit there, you visualize, and you manifest. Even if that coincidence pops up in your head, okay, you do it for the next spell, and the next spell, and the next spell. You line them all up, and you realize every time you've done something, it manifests for you. Use that as your proof. Write down in journals. See your own proof. Though, I never really had to do that. Not saying any. I'm just saying. I just remember experiences. I definitely have doubted myself in my magic, but I've always been reassured as well with signals and signs and messages from the divine how do i know because i'm not closed-minded closed-minded is like a huge key i know i keep bringing that up every single time but yeah all right so sometimes not all your spells work and i literally just saw the lady garb dancer post a video something along those lines and i want to watch it but i haven't yet but you should watch it, because if you want to know more about that, you should watch that video. But sometimes you have done something prior that's protecting you of a new situ of a new spell you want to cast, because it might have other consequences you weren't aware of. So you've got a protection going up somewhere. It's blocking that out. Sometimes it's for the better. Sometimes depending on how you've done your magic sometimes it could be for the worse uh other times there's deities or guides or higher beings out there that are protecting you from spells that you shouldn't be casting other times is not enough intention because the more you put out the better you will receive if you 
put a penny worth in, you're just going to get a penny worth out. Okay? You feel that? Alright, last but not least, let the divine speak to you through your intuition. You're going to awaken this feeling inside of you. It's that feeling you've known you've had, you recognize it, you've never really messed with it too much. It's called intuition, knowing something without having any way of knowing. The divine will speak through to you through that way and develop your intuition through your third eye, through your crown chakra, through your engine. What's that word called? I don't know, but through your aura basically and focus on that and through that you will know you will just have this feeling this sense of assurance basically when you get a message from the divine you will know when you get the message simple and plain as that as long as you are not doubtful as long as you are not closed-minded and again you feel that spark you know what's there you know what's real it is that's what makes everything work that's what makes everything real the reason everybody thinks it's not real is because it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work in a set way. It's just up to the witch, and we make it work our own way. So other than that, that's pretty much all the advice I got for you guys. I hope you have a great night. I hope this video was useful, and blessed be everybody. Bye.